Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. There comes a time when you model things where eventually you're not going to have a flat surface to be able to sketch on. And in this case, you can see that on this cylinder that I've got a rectangular boss that comes off there. And uh, I want to talk about making this boss because when we start a sketch, Fusion's always going to ask us for a flat plane to sketch from. And of course, there's always some different ways you go about doing this, but I wanted to show you a way where we can make some work geometry, in this case, a work plane that we can use to sketch our feature on. And we'll even uh, take a little bit of a different look how we can use some of the new tools inside of Fusion to make this process even easier. So what I have here is just a rectangular boss rotated 30 degrees off of either the uh, one of the one of the primary axes here. So it's 30 degrees revolved. Um, we're gonna go over to another file that I've started, and all I've done so far is I've drawn the cylinder exactly what we saw on the last screen. And so now what I want to do is I'd like to draw that rectangle, but when I create the sketch, there's no flat features to sketch on. And that's usually going to be your first clue that you need some kind of work geometry. The thing that you need, you can't, you can't draw on. You either need to create a work point, a work axis, a combination of both in order to finally get to a work plane. So under the construct menu is where these different options are going to live. And the one that I want to talk about today is the tangent plane option. So this creates a, tan, a, a plane tangent to a cylinder or a conical face. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select that. And now it just wants to know what face do I want to be tangent to. So it doesn't really matter where I select. I'm going to fix, I'm going to fix the angle rotation here in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this face right there. And you can see Fusion gives me a cylinder, but it's not lined up to anything. It's, you know, I'd like this to be 30 degrees the other way. So the first thing I want to do is set a reference angle, but I have no flat planes to work with. However, we always have flat planes to work with. If I turn on the origin folder, you'll see that those three planes uh, show up on my cylinder and I can work with one of these two planes that I can uh, make, this cylinder, uh, make this work plane be aligned with. So for me, for my reference plane, I'm going to go ahead and select that reference plane right there. And now if we look at it from the top, that plane is now squared up with the, with the plane that I selected. Now I simply want to rotate it negative 30 degrees. And you can see that plane now rotates 30 degrees that way. And I can go ahead and click OK. And the good news is that I have uh, a work plane that I can work with. However, if we, if we go back here, we'll see that there's some kind of thickness to this. Right now that, that plane is actually on that face. I, if I draw on that face and I extrude out, I'm going to have little gaps on the side where, where that profile doesn't extend all the way to the edge. Um, and if I just extrude out, you know, the, the opposite way, then I don't get I don't get the length that I want of this extrusion. So let's look at how we can handle that. So there's a couple different ways that we can handle that. First, I'm going to just talk about creating another work plane, and that's called the offset plane. So I'm going to choose the offset plane command and click on the first plane that I just created. And I'm going to offset that plane by one inch. So now if we look at that from the top, I have an exact replica of that plane. It's just offset by one inch. I can go ahead and hit OK. If you want to clean up your browse, uh, your construction folders a little bit, we'll just go to the construction folder in the browser and expand that out. And I'll shut off that first work plane that we created. So now I can simply just come in and sketch a rectangle, center point rectangle, on that plane right there. It's going to kind of drag out my rectangular size. And uh, if I remember right, it's one inch. I'll hit the tab key to get to the other field by 1.25 inches. Not 125, 1.25. Go ahead and hit enter. And then I want this to be lined up with that origin point. So I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint to make this vertical. And then the last dimension I want to do, I'm going to do D for dimension on the keyboard. Is I'm going to select my origin point and the bottom line. And I'm going to make that dimension 0.5. So now I have my, my sketch profile that I can work with. If I come and extrude this, as soon as I pull this and it meets the other surface, it starts to cut through, which is definitely not what I want to do. Now I could pull it there and then switch my operation type to join, which is just going to join those two bodies. But there's an easier way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and cancel and redo this again. This time I'm going to choose extrude, select that region. And for the instead of using a distance where I specify distance, I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know what, extrude to an object, and I'm going to click on the face of that cylinder, click OK, and there is my uh, feature. 
The only thing I have left to do is F for fillet and I'll add the fillets around the outside of this part. So you can see I can even select edges if I can approximate where they are through the solid body. And for the radius, I'm going to enter in a quarter of an inch, which is what I drew in that other one. We go ahead and there we have our feature that we used uh, based on work plane construction geometry. I want to do kind of the same thing and do this using one less work plane. So I'm going to choose to do another tangent plane. This time I'm going to go ahead and click over here. Um, I'm going to select a reference plane by turning on my origin planes again. Go ahead and select that plane right there. Uh, we'll rotate this um, 150 degrees off center. Actually, let's do it 130. So there we have another one of those features. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Rotate around. And now what I can do is go ahead and sketch a rectangle, center point rectangle, on that plane. Now remember the first time I did this, I created two planes to get to this stage. So I'm just going to do my same center point rectangle. It's going to be 1.25 high, tab, to get to the other field by one wide. Again, I'm going to use that vertical constraint to line things up. And then a D for dimension from the origin to the bottom line. Drag over and place this. I'm going to give it a 0.5 inch dimension. You can see these two features now line up. I'm going to go ahead and stop the sketch. If we look at this from the top, what I was getting at earlier is that profile lives exactly at the tangent point. Um, I didn't give it that one inch offset that I did for this other one. So to deal with that, I'm going to go ahead and create an extrude. I want this is the profile I want to extrude, but notice that there's a start plane that I can specify. I want to choose offset from that plane and I want to offset by one inch. And then for the extents, I want to go to an object again and I'm going to click on that cylindrical face. And there you can see that I've got my one inch thickness, even though I didn't create a secondary work plane to do that. I'm going to hit OK. Hit F on the keyboard for fillet one more time. Grab the four selected edges that I need to add my fillet to. And specify my radius of a quarter of an inch. And there you can see I basically have the same feature that I started out with on the other one. Um, only this time I only use work one work plane. And I use the offset command from within the extrude command to uh, specify a start plane. So I hope that gets you started on when you need to create features on round things like this. Using work geometry is going to be a very common workflow. You're always going to run into situations where you need to create some kind of construction geometry that you're going to need to sketch on. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, I appreciate it if you'd like it so, you, so I know if I'm hitting the topics that you'd like to see or not. And as always, uh, if you subscribe, that would be fantastic. Thanks for watching.